Hey guys, welcome back to part two of Budget Holga. Here it is, a heavily modified Holga, which I modified myself using duct tape and brute force. As you can see here, I uh, fitted a Linhof 90 millimeter f 6.8 lens. It does have the coverage for 4x5. Uh, I don't think it has any movements on 4x5, but on 6x12, I don't see any vignetting, so that's great. I also added a viewfinder that's calibrated to a focus scale, which is very crude, but it kind of works with uh, scale focusing. But I don't shoot a lot of close up stuff anyways, so it's pretty much always at infinity. So I've been using this camera for the past couple of months, and I have to say that this has become my favorite camera. I say this partly because I made it, and also I think that it takes the largest format with the least amount of effort, relatively speaking. So what I mean is that I have a 4x5, and it's great, it takes a really large negative, but this thing is 5 pounds, so I can't exactly walk around with it. So if I stuck with this camera, I'd miss a lot of photo opportunities, as opposed to this, you know, this is lighter than most DSLRs, so I can carry it around and it's almost like a handheld large format camera. Alright, now this is the part that I'd imagine you guys are watching this video for. Uh, I'm going to show you guys some photos uh, that I shot with this camera over the past couple months. And I'm going to compare them with the photos that I shot with the original lens. So this is a shot that I took very early on with the stock lens, focused at air quote infinity. It's definitely um, not at infinity, but that's where the lens stops. If you take a look at the trees on the left, uh, top left corner, I don't even know what's going on there. Like, is that just the signature look of like a, a one element lens or something? But yeah, it's uh, very crude, very lo-fi. got some dust there, that's on me though. And let's look at a shot that I took with a new lens. This was the first shot that I ever took with this camera. I wanted to see how accurate my focus calibration was. And it was pretty accurate. I focused at around a meter and the pot was indeed about a meter away. And just look at how shallow the depth of field is. And I was still able to get critical focus on what I wanted to focus on. The, sharp, the image sharpness is pretty crazy. This was scanned at 4800 dpi on my uh, little Epson V550. But still, like the image quality matches uh, closely with the 4x5. And I think this can be printed very large. This shot was shot wide open at f6.8 because it was uh, pretty dark uh, at the time. It was late afternoon. The exposure was, I think, around... Uh, one or two seconds. It's probably one second because everything is pretty sharp. There's no motion blur. All right, moving on to another photo. This one I shot in a park pretty early in the morning. I had this uh, exposing for about 20 seconds at f16. Yeah, the colors are great. The sharpness is great. I did notice some chromatic aberration. Uh, as you can see, like, there's some red, what are they called? Like, fringes or something in the high contrast areas? Because the trees are backlit by the sky. First of all, this is a $200 lens from, like, 70 years ago. And also, I've seen the same fringes on the Canon L, what is it, 24 to 105? So, I mean... This happens in modern lenses too. Sounds like I'm defending it, but 
it, it's kind of true. Like this is this is not too bad. Um, moving on, this is a photo I shot again early in the morning of a pool. I think I, I, I color graded this a little bit. So it has, originally it had a pinkish uh, tint because it was uh, from the sun, I guess. I kind of like this cooler tone. All right, moving on. This is a photo I shot from my friend's balcony. He has a great view over North Burnaby. Uh, this was scanned at 4,800 DPI. There's so much detail on the bottom half, especially like where you can see the little houses. Yeah, I'm just amazed at the image quality of this camera because I don't, I don't even see a reason to shoot with the Hasselblad anymore because I get the same results, except it's double the film size of the Hasselblad. All right, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I modify the camera. So what you would need is obviously the lens and you need a macro extender uh, with the matching uh, thread diameter that matches the lens. I forgot what it is, but I'll link this in the description. And then you would need a piece of ground glass in the correct size that'll fit in the back of the camera like this. So then you would be able to see the image from here and calibrate your focus. And while I was calibrating the focus, I actually drew um, little dots that matches the, the distance that, uh, that I was able to calculate. And this way I can, like when I'm shooting, I can just focus with the rangefinder, get the distance, check the focus scale, and then rotate to the corresponding dot that matches the distance. This is the original lens that I took off. And I was left with a stock lens cone with an opening. And um, this macro adapter has the same thread diameter as the lens, as this lens. So I was able to just screw this lens onto the macro extender. And this macro extender is then glued onto the lens cone, into the opening. And yeah, I taped everything up so that there's no light leaks. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the issues with using this camera. First of all, this is light, but it's pretty big, you know? It's still like super bulky. So it's hard to carry around, especially when they're there's not enough room on either side for me to like grip it. So it'd be nice if I can have some sort of grip either on this side or on both sides. Like, um, I think it's the Fuji 617 that has grips on both sides. So that'd be pretty cool. And another problem is that these flimsy little latches are so loose that it's so easy to just knock it and they'll come loose and then the, the film back will just come off like this. So same problems as last time in the previous episode, I mentioned that every time I use this camera, I have to fully tape all the, all the seams and the, and, the, and the latches so that there's, first of all, there's no light leaks Second of all, the latch doesn't come off when I'm shooting. Yeah, and another thing is just that it's pretty big. So this brings me to the last thing that I want to talk about, which is um, how to make this more compact. 
I did some research on this lens and I found out that this lens is actually part of a series of lenses uh, made for, I believe it was uh, medium format press cameras. I found a lens that's 65 millimeters, but everything else is exactly the same as this lens. Right now, the reason why this lens cone is so big is because this lens is 90 millimeters. So the flange distance, uh, which means when this lens is focused at infinity, the lens has to be physically 90 millimeters away from the film plane. Imagine if I had a 65 millimeter lens, the flange distance would be, you know, 65 millimeters. So then the lens cone would go from being this thick to about this thick. And then the lens would be like from here to here. So that would make this super compact, uh, especially if you're gonna like walk around with it in the streets, it needs to be light and it needs to be small. And also the 65 millimeter would be equivalent to like, I don't know, 24, 28 millimeters on a, on a full frame. So the focal length is also really good for street. So yeah, I'm gonna do it. I already ordered a 3D printer and I'm gonna print a lens cone for the 65 millimeter lens and I'm gonna print a grip. And most importantly, I wanna come up with a better design for the back so that it doesn't have to rely on, the, on these stupid latches. Maybe I'm thinking like print some sort of hinge and glue it onto the side. So this back could be like hinged on one side. Another issue with this back is the light leaks, right? Like the, how I have to tape it up every time. So I also hope that I can somehow come up with a design that uh, eliminates having to use the tape. Uh, maybe have like some baffles, some more baffles on around the edges or something. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. And maybe there'll be part three. If I have anything new, I'll definitely make another video about this.